Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how not to add motors to your robot. Now, I know what you're thinking. What? Trust me, it'll make sense. For this project, I'm going to be implementing a very simple control system, one that uses a joystick and the motor, plus something in between. So let's talk about the joystick. As part of ROS2, there is a joystick node that under the covers uses SDL2, which is a very cool open source library that can interface with a ton of joysticks. In fact, we've used Xbox controllers, iPega controllers on a Surface Go, an accessible controller, and even weird ones like this handheld one, or even a Steam Deck. The goal of the joystick node is to be the perfect joystick. It doesn't really interpret what you're trying to do with it. All it's trying to do is interface with the joystick itself and convert it into a standard message. In order to talk to a motor, we have to turn the joystick command into something the motor understands. And that's the job of the teleop twist node. Now, in this case, it's very specific to a joystick. It consumes a joystick message and turns it into something the motor can consume. And we've implemented, I've implemented a quick motor controller that's based on the SparkFun uh, motor controller that comes with the SparkFun JetBot. Now the messages go directly from the joystick node to the teleop twist node, from the teleop twist node to the motor. Between the joystick node and the teleop twist, there's a joystick topic with a sensor message. And between the joystick, the teleop node to the motor is a command velocity. Now, fortunately, this is the same message that's going to be sent from Navigation 2. So this is a way uh, for us to test our motor controller before we hook up Navigation. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the joystick message itself. It consists of three fields, a standard header, which includes the frame and message generation time, axes, which is an array of doubles, and buttons, which is an array of bool that indicates the state of the button. For a traditional Xbox style controller, the mapping looks a little bit like this. Your zero is left and right. Um, one index is up and down, so on and so forth. Same with buttons. These are mapped like at A, B, X, Y. And a message is generated every time an event happens or if it's configured to auto repeat. Now the teleop twist joy converts the joystick into a command velocity. In order to know how to convert the individual axes, uh, it has some parameters. Uh, but the two that I'm going to talk about are the enable button, which is essentially a dead man switch, uh, or the turbo button, which allows you to accelerate faster than the regular enable button. Now these do need to be pressed in order for the motor to, or the Teleop Twist Joy to generate command velocities. The Teleop Twist Joy is going to generate a command velocity, which consists of two components. First is an angular rotation, which is how fast it spins in radians per second. And the other is linear motion in meters per second, and this is in three dimensions. You combine these two together in order to generate motion on a, ro on a robot. Now, we're using what's called a differential drive robot, which essentially uses two wheels and a caster in order to make motion. So we need to split the angular rotation and the linear motion into a left and right. Let's talk a little bit about the motor controller itself. So this is a quick motor controller from SparkFun. It uses the I2C interface, supplies power and output to two motors can support up to a, a amp and 1.2 amps and 127 drive levels forward and backward. And it'll support motors up to 12 volts. The motors we're actually using on the SparkFun JetBot are these Daigu robot motors with a mini gearbox. They are eh, 4.5 volts, uh, about a quarter of an amp at start, uh, stall. Uh, and they do about 140 RPM, which is uh, pretty quick. So what's incorrect? Well, these motors do not have an encoder. We don't know how fast they're moving for a given power level. 
What does that mean? Well, a, motor, a robot going downhill is going to require less power for a specific speed than one going uphill. So not having that encoder means that we actually aren't sure how fast this is moving in a closed loop control with the motor controller. Now we're going to mitigate this externally later on, but for now, we don't really have a good way of determining what the speed is given uh, input from the joystick. So let's talk about some fixes. First thing is, is that SparkFun does offer a version of this motor that has built-in encoders. In order to service that encoder, we need a microcontroller, which I don't currently have associated with this particular build, but there is one available in the form of what SparkFun calls the AutoFET. Now this is a fairly large board, but it actually includes all of the sensors that we've included, plus the encoder uh, and servos, which is kind of cool if you want to do pan tilt. This took six months for me to get, and I just got it. So I might do a, a version of this video later on, but today we're not going to address encoders. Okay, so the objective of our motor controller now is to split a given command velocity into a left speed and a right speed. That speed, we have to convert to power levels. So the formula we're using for that is combining the linear speed and the angular rotation, plus the wheel separation wheel radius, which will give us a power level for the motor. Now I know what you're thinking here. I have a meters per second and radians per second. Is this really the right formula? Well, let's talk about incorrect number two. The first is that the motor controller needs to know the geometry of the robot. If you remember some of my earlier videos, I talked about composability of ROS and that a ROS node should be the perfect implementation of a specific device whether it's the joystick or motor, and it shouldn't really know anything other than what it's told to do for that motor. However, in this case, the motor controller knows the geometry of the robot in order to compute speed. The second thing is, is that it actually uses a finagle constant, which is a really wonderful mathematic principle. I've included a description here. This finagle constant turns the meters per second and radians per second into a power level in one a constant. So I definitely encourage you to read that paper. So let's do a quick code walkthrough. Let's switch over to Visual Studio Code. This is connected to my JetBot over SSH, and this is the motor controller itself. A little bit of a caveat, this controller actually predates the wiring ROS code directly implementing the motor controller API. I would love to switch it over to the new motor controller, which I will do when we switch over to the AutoFET. This will be done as part of the ROS2 control work stream. I'm going to focus a little bit just on the command velocity so you can see how it fits into the bigger picture. The command velocity callback, we subscribe to command velocity and get the geometry twist. We extract the linear and angular rotation and turn those into a left and right speed, taking into account wheel separation, wheel radius, and our magical constant, which turns it into us a power level for these motors. Given the power level, we send an I squared C command based on which channel we're interfacing with and give it a forward or backward based on which direction we're going. So it's very basic. I'm going to go launch that now. Let's switch over to RQT and see how the joystick is, works. I'm going to switch over to a terminal window, then launch the Ross Teleoptwist Joy. This launches the joystick as well as the teleop node and connects to an Xbox controller. Now to see the output from the Xbox controller, we're gonna use a tool called RQT, which is a ROS monitor, has a whole bunch of different plugins. You're not gonna be able to see it on my capture, but I'm going to the plugins menu, topics, submenu, and then the topic monitor. Here you can see all of the messages and topics that we are currently publishing. 
and I'll select the joystick. Now it might take a second for it to pick up the messages. So now that we've actually gotten messages from the output of the joystick, we can do some experimentation. So let's start with the triggers, because those actually come in as an axis. You can see that the value here is 0.99999. As I pull the trigger, you can see that it goes from negative to positive on both of those, and left and right forward. You can see how those map. And pressing a button will toggle one or zero in the button array. Now the Teleop Twist Joy is also creating rotation, except I need to press the Enable button in order to make it go. Okay. I am now going to run it on the robot. Yay. And that is how to build a motor controller incorrectly. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. In the next videos, we will talk about uh, transforms, URDF, and ROS2 control. And then we'll finally be able to get to Navigation 2. So that's going to be exciting. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I really do appreciate all the comments. Thank you.